Aloha, our next tips topic is introducing you to electronic portfolios. An electronic portfolio, or ePortfolio, is a website that you create to highlight who you are professionally. Your ePortfolio serves as an excellent supplement to job applications, providing potential employers with information about you that goes beyond what they ask for in the application packet. But even after you've been hired, it also provides your colleagues and students with a view of who you are as an ever-developing professional in the field. What are the advantages of an ePortfolio? For one thing, information about you is only a click away, no matter where a potential employer may be. Additionally, your professional portfolio can be found via web searches. Also, you can embed the link in your CVs and cover letters so that potential employers can easily learn more about you. Web-based portfolios are also fairly easy to maintain and update. And because the information is public, there's a strong incentive not to procrastinate about keeping your ePortfolio current. Because you designed your ePortfolio yourself, the overall look will give viewers a fuller picture of you than merely providing a few documents in an application package. You choose the background and layout, the theme and color scheme, any photos that are included in the portfolio design how your items are organized via the menu bar, and what additional information is included on the home page and throughout the different sections of the site. Note that these advantages also imply the need to think through each of these options so that the you that is being presented really reflects the you that you'd like viewers to see. However, another advantage of an ePortfolio is that if you don't like how it looks, you can always change it. Next, let's talk about what to include and what not to include in your ePortfolio. Over time, your ePortfolio can include many of the portfolio items that were mentioned in Module 1, Lesson 1. But initially, there are a few items that we feel are essential. Your CV, your philosophy of teaching statement, and one or more sets of materials and lesson plans that reflect your philosophy. Each of these items is covered in later modules. So once you've created the skeleton site for your ePortfolio, you can upload each of these items as soon as you've finished them. For some items, such as the CV, your ePortfolio should use a version that is geared to a general audience, a wide range of potential employers, colleagues, and students. However, when you apply for a specific job, you'll want to send the employer a CV that has been specially tailored to the needs and duties of the specific job. You'll learn more about this in Module 4. As you begin to think about adding other items to your ePortfolio, we have a few suggestions to help guide you. First, keep in mind that consistency is a plus in an online portfolio. Every item you share should be consistent with your philosophy of teaching. Imagine the impression it makes if you include a lesson plan that contradicts what you say you believe. Similarly, where possible, include portfolio items that are interwoven. For example, if you want to include a sample of your student's writing, how about using samples from a lesson plan that is already a part of your portfolio? Likewise, if you want to show how you respond to students' writing, use your feedback on some of the same samples that were interconnected to the lesson plan. Second, when your portfolio includes downloadable files or embedded videos, be sure to have brief annotations that give the viewer a clear idea of what they are and how they reflect your philosophy, or another relevant reason why you are including them. Otherwise, your viewers probably will pass them by without clicking on them. Finally, if you have accounts like LinkedIn or academia.edu, you may want to include links to your accounts. Likewise, you will eventually want to include a link to your personal ePortfolio site on your LinkedIn or academia.edu sites as well. If you do not yet have accounts with either of these professionally focused social networks, we recommend that you consider creating one. 
There are also a few items that you should avoid including in your e-portfolio. For example, don't include your cover letters. Those were written for particular jobs and it might be embarrassing if they were made public. Another item not to include is your contact information. At first, this seems counterintuitive. After all, how does a potential employer contact you if you don't list your address, email address, and phone number? However, there are many cases of spammers and other kinds of cyber criminals who prey on people who post their contact information. As an alternative, most web development apps have templates for a contact me page where someone can type in their contact information and send a message to you. These templates will send the message to you without publishing your email address. Note, however, that when you apply for a specific job, you will want to include your contact information on the PDF versions of your CV and cover letter. Finally, be careful when you choose photos of yourself to include on your ePortfolio. Keep your audience in mind and make sure you use photos of your professional self. Lastly, there are several web design platforms that make it easy to create your ePortfolio, ranging from some that are quite expensive to others that are free. Some of the free web creation sites are Blogger, Google Sites, Weebly, Wix, and WordPress. Each has ready-made themes you can choose from, and you'd be surprised how much you can tweak those themes with different colors, fonts, photos, etc. If an ePortfolio sounds like something you want to create, we encourage you to start exploring these web design sites now. Explore their themes, play with copying and pasting data from your CVs. For example, some may require extra work to have multiple levels of bulleted lists. Try inserting photos, embedding videos, and more. It won't take long before you find a platform that best fits your aims. If you've never created a website before, many of these companies have step-by-step -step guidelines for creating websites from initial planning through publication. Just check out their help sections. In addition, a YouTube search will bring up any number of videos for website beginners on how to use a particular platform. In Module 8, Lesson 2, toward the end of the series, we will revisit designing ePortfolios with even more detailed strategies. Next up, test what you've learned in the Think section. Check out the Dig Deeper resources to gain additional perspectives on the value, uses, and ways of organizing a teacher portfolio. In the Discuss section, think about effective ways to incorporate multimedia in an ePortfolio and also how to take into account the audience's point of view when designing your site. As a suggested follow-up task, start exploring and playing with free web design platforms. Thanks for listening.